Donald Trump in Virginia after a strong debate last night. Hello, everyone. I'm Dana Perino, along with my good friends, Jean, Judge Jeanine Pirro, Harold Ford Jr., Jesse Waters, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deb debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. Mm, President Biden telling terrified Democrats from the safety of a teleprompter that he's not going anywhere after a bumbling debate performance set off a full-blown panic and calls to step aside. Take a look at what I was left when I became president and what Mr. Trump left me. We have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean, billionaires in America. What I've been able to do with the... Uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare, and I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. The media openly questioning if Joe Biden should even stay in the race. Very bad night for Joe Biden. Deep, a wide, and a very aggressive panic in the Democratic Party. It's kind of a DEFCON one moment. President Biden needs to step down for humanity, for his integrity, and for his legacy. There, is a gonna, there are going to be discussions about whether he should continue. The um, universal reaction was somewhere approaching panic. Conversations range from whether he should be in this race tomorrow morning to what was wrong with him. That was painful. Uh, I love Joe Biden. I work for Joe Biden. Um, he didn't do well at all. A lot of people have resting 25th Amendment face. <laughs> and here's an image Democrats don't want you to see. First Lady Jill Biden escorting her husband off the stage last night. But she insists he did a great job. Joe, you did such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the facts. And Barack Obama also coming to Joe Biden's defense. He's posted this on X. Bad debate nights happen. Trust me. I know. Greg Gutfeld. Yeah. You know. You know how it is. I uh, wasn't shocked by this. I was disgusted by the people who are shocked by this. Uh, imagine you're an American. An apolitical person untethered to any political silo who saw Biden last night for the first time, because that's when you check into politics. There's going to be a debate. How shocked and horrified would you have been? It's like running into an old friend that you hadn't seen in a couple of years who's now on the street and barely recognizable and he's homeless. I mean, mm. the people who are apolitical have an excuse for being shocked. But what about the Democrats and the media who are saying they are shocked and panicking? They're trying to play America. These are the slimy a-holes, right, who told us Biden was as sharp as a tack. And now they're kind of saying, well, this might be a one-off night. No, I recognize that Biden. I saw that Biden every single day. People are obsessed over the 2024 election. What about the time between now and then? We don't have a president. We know this. But... Now, so does the world and so does the so do our enemies. And so you got the media, you know, they act like a guy waking up from an acid trip in the forest without their clothes on. What just happened? So we have to ask ourselves, were they delusional all along or is this a plan? Force Joe out by exposing what they knew already to the world well before the DNC so then they can get him replaced. We cannot allow our country to be this exposed to outside forces now that the world and our adversaries see that we are without a leader. But it makes you wonder, we didn't have a leader for a long time. And we keep saying this is unfair and cruel to Joe Biden. It's actually unfair and cruel to the American people to put us through that. And it was done by people whose hatred of Trump takes priority of love for country. So this isn't a review of a debate. It's an autopsy. Mm -hmm.
Mm. Just Janine, we haven't heard from you yet. Tell us what you think about all this. I mean, we have we have a whole hour. But. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there's look, there's so much to say. Um, I, I, I thought that Tom Friedman's comment uh, from the New York Times was interesting when he said uh, he urges the commander in chief to put the nation's interest first by not seeking re-election. And you know, for so many years, we've been listening to the fact that you know it's all about Donald Trump. He doesn't care about us. He puts himself first. Well, Tom Friedman just encapsulize the whole thing. Tom Friedman is saying, Joe Biden, you're putting yourself first in front of the American people because as commander in chief, you have no place being in the White House or in the Oval Office. So I thought that was very compelling. I also thought what was uh, what was compelling is the fact that we've been talking all week about the, the, the hangar and the eight days or seven days and the 16 advisors you mean to tell me they didn't see this? Mm -hmm. This is a debate that Joe Biden put all the barriers around. He said he wanted it at CNN. They decided what the rules were. Donald Trump just came in at the end and said, I'll do it anywhere. And so Joe Biden knew this, and he still was that bad. That's after all of the stuff that, that he went through to prepare him. And third, Joe Biden says, I know how to tell the truth. You know what? He lied. I'm sick and tired of hearing all day about how Donald Trump lied. He lied when he said no Americans died under his watch. That was an insult to the families of the 13 who were killed in mm -hmm. Afghanistan and three after that in Jordan. Um, and then when he said the Border Patrol, they endorsed me. The Border Patrol immediately puts out we didn't endorse Joe Biden, and we never will. So I'm kind of tired of hearing about Joe Biden coming out and saying Donald Trump lied the whole night. And, you know, today we see him, as you showed at the beginning, and I'll end with this. It's like the guy got a spray tan. Uh, he's a different guy because he can read a speech like a fifth grader How does can this read cold a go away so fast? Yeah, I guess so it true. wasn't oh a cold, God. was it, Dana? I don't know. That was weird. Uh, this just in, Bill Clinton, because you've been waiting for this all day, and we have it for you. Bill Clinton just posted this on X. He basically said he's going to leave the debate rating to the pundits, which we're happy to provide. Mm. And he said, um, here's what he knows. Facts and history matter. Joe Biden has given us three years of solid leadership, steadying us after the pandemic, creating a record number of new jobs, making real progress, solving the climate crisis, and launching a successful effort in reducing inflation, all while pulling us out of the quagmire that Donald Trump left us in. That's what's really at stake in November. Uh -huh. um, I wonder how, I mean, it took him a long time to write that today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a long time to get a statement out, Harold Ford Jr. Good to be so, here. Um, this was um, an opportunity for Joe Biden, who asked for the debate, mm. to do two things. Uh, to mitigate concerns about age, which are associated with that are concerns about mental and physical acuity. And then two, to try to convey, begin this conversation with a country um, in a broad way, because I, 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 I hear everything that Greg said, and I agree with him. We are invested in these conversations and learning about this and, try, and talking about this uh, and having a great conversation that the country uh, enjoys, at least the ratings suggest that, we enjoy it. Had a chance to, to convey to millions of people who don't see all this what he wanted to do, and uh, more importantly, that he was able to do it. And he failed. Uh, he failed miserably. Um, he didn't convey that uh, uh, Donald Trump is unfit for office, and in fact, he conveyed in some ways that he may not be fit for the office. Mm. I think when you hear Bill Clinton and others, uh, President Obama and President Clinton say that uh, he's a good man, Joe Biden is a good man, uh, that he has done a lot and accomplished a lot, he has. Uh, a lot of jobs, a lot of investments. Uh, Donald Trump, who I thought had a decent night, had a better night because of the way Joe Biden uh, performed. Mm -hmm. um, I think Democrats have to understand there's a lot at stake in the election. And if you are, if we as a party are content with the next three or four months with what we saw last night, then we should all stand down. Um, but I'm one that believes that as a father of a 10 year old and a nine year old, we have a difference of opinion about the presidential race. Some of my friends are around the table and that's fine. Uh, the priorities that we may share, intentions that we want for president. The reason I shared what I shared last night, that the president, the third thing he wanted to do, President Biden, was to quiet the talk about him being replaced. He didn't do that. Mm -mm. As we get up to this morning, and even last night as we go through the day, yeah. um, we shouldn't kid ourselves 
uh, we should be open-minded, serious, and honest about the options that we have before us. And we should be content or resolved. If we decide we're going to go forward with Joe Biden, then everyone should understand what can happen after what happened last night. And I'm hopeful and prayerful that we're serious about this decision over the next several days. Jesse, I feel that we at this table are a little bit underplaying the Democrats' reaction to this because it was full-blown panic and immunity, mm. or mutiny, excuse me, mut I've got immunity on the brain from the Supreme Court, mutiny from supporters of his who we're going to talk about in the next block have been hide trying to hide this, but we're acting like, like Bill Clinton and Obama are making decisions here, like the Definitely the party faithful were saying, oh, no, this is never going to work. Yeah, I mean, I'm hearing murmurs about this guy being the nominee. So anything is possible. That. Well, I have, Harold, <laughs> and I'm stirring those rumors myself personally. <laughs> I was driving Jesse Jr. to camp this morning, yeah. and he said, mm -hmm. Dad, why did the deep state try to invoke the 25th Amendment against Donald Trump, who last night was clearly cogent, but they have not invoked it against Joe Biden. Mm. I said, son, you're asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. And then he <laughs> spilled his milk all over the car seat. <laughs> My mom called afterwards, uh -oh. and I said hello. Didn't brag, didn't gloat. I just said, get ready for the dictatorship. Because, you know, maybe it's not what you expect in your last twilight years, but democracy is just pretty much over with. Come on, we've had enough. <laughs> We now got upstairs around 9.01 and missed like the first minute, and I just see Biden. And it was like the Nixon Kennedy. I mean, I'm just saying that to sound smart. I wasn't alive then, but <laughs> you see the face and then you see Trump's face and you, you think he's going to lose right there. And then the minute he opens his mouth, you're like, no, he's really going to lose. It it's, sounds like he's got punched in the bread basket. And then at minute 12, you get this... Mm -hmm. Total breakdown, and then he comes up and says, I defeated Medicare? And Johnny jumps out of his seat and says, ah! <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to calm him down. And, and he's like, Trey's like, what balls do you want to go to during the inauguration? I'm like, all right, a little ahead of yourself, Johnny. But it's true. I mean, you think it's over at that point. And then, and then they go to abortion. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, this is where I'm going to get a little nervous. And, and Trump fights to a draw on abortion by talking about partial birth. Yep. And then he fights to a draw on Jan 6. Mm -hmm. And if Biden can't do that, he can't do anything. Then they spent 20 minutes calling each other the worst president in history. Yes. <laughs> and and then, then Trump has to defend about 16 hoaxes, bloodbath, fine people. He's getting a little in the weeds. Right? But then he anchors every question to immigration. Mm -hmm. While Joe is just regurgitating memorized wonky statistics and can't articulate it. And so then I come down because I'm doing the post show and I see this guy, Harold Ford Jr., looks as white as a ghost. Never seen Harold so white. It's because he watched the ghost for 90 minutes become translucent and just fade from the horse race. Before the debate, Virginia was in play. Before the debate, Minnesota was in play. I just saw a poll where Trump's up in New Jersey. So think about what's coming up because I don't see how this changes. You're going to get a fallout for the next week. You're going to get great Trump fundraising for the next week. You're going to get great Trump poll numbers for the next week. And then you're going to get the RNC convention, which is going to build so much momentum going into August. How's Joe Biden going to stop that momentum? And then he's going to have a really discombobulated convention and everyone's going to be fighting. And then his son's getting sentenced for gun charges. And then they start a six week tax trial that points right to the big guy. I don't I don't know what's going to happen. But if Barack and Bill say this is it, this is the guy, he might just be in it to lose it. Mm. I stopped taking notes at 9.17. I was like, <laughs> right? I think I'm good. It's I over. Think, and I just sat back and watched all of these great He was good. You, you talk about with the layman. When you, asked, when you were asked on the set at 9 o'clock right before, you were, you were spot on. I give you credit for Thank you very much. Right Although now, I did so. predict nothing would change from this race. <laughs> the polls might not change right not away. Not the this greatest is prediction. You might be right. All right. Bumbling. Bumbling. Apolitical. Apolitical. Silo. Silo. Adversary. Adversary. Pundit. Pundit. Quagmire. Quagmire. 
Mitigate, mitigate. Acuity, acuity. Mutiny, mutiny. Invoke, invoke. Cogent, cogent. Gloat, gloat. Dictatorship, dictatorship. Twilight, twilight. Regurgitate, regurgitate. Wonky, wonky. Articulate, articulate. Translucent, translucent. Momentum, momentum. Discombobulated, discombobulated. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to my channel to stay up to date with future videos. Thank you for watching.